guys, it's William here from Junie Lion Williams Adventures, back with another subject on our YouTube channel. We appreciate all our subscribers. We appreciate all the, our followers. Junie Lion and myself are glad that you guys are coming along with us for the adventure, guys. So we wanted to talk a short while of the day, maybe seven, eight minutes, about a very important subject, I thought, especially if you're coming to vacation in the Philippines or if you're transitioning and planning on being an expat, as a lot of our subscribers that we have on this channel have told us. Um, one of the greatest things that's not talked about a lot, guys, is location. Where you choose to vacation at and where you choose to set up your residence at if you're planning on becoming an expat and moving to the Philippines. Let's talk about it for a little while, guys. Remember, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. It surely helps our channel, guys. We appreciate that. And don't forget, the, I know it's boring, but watch some of the ads. That helps us with our YouTube revenue, guys. We appreciate that. So listen, location, location, location. Where, William, if I'm deciding to move to the Philippines and retire there, what about location? Well, yesterday they had a minor earthquake in this area, the Subaru area. We live in Lapu Lapu City. We live in a gated uh, subdivision called Bayswater Subdivision. Um, one of the things that I scouted out quite a couple years before I actually finished my plan about moving to the Philippines and retiring in the Philippines was I did my research on location. Remember, there are a lot of islands that you could live on in the Philippines. Philippines is made up of over 7,000 islands. A lot of them are uninhabitable, but a lot of them are habitable. And it's very beautiful islands. But a lot of, a lot of people say, when I move to the Philippines, I wanna live by the beach, which is very affordable. I wanna live you know, somewhere around the water. And that's good until there's something like a typhoon. There are places like Leyte, there are places like that are known to be in Typhoon Alley. There are a lot of natural disasters in the Philippines, um, mudslides. Um, there are all kinds of flooding. Um, there can be tsunamis. There can be earthquakes. All these things are prevalent and it's always hot. So especially if you're over 65, let's say that, and you're planning on moving to the Philippines and you've met a girl online, let's say, in an LDR. She lives in uh, a certain island or a certain province and you're coming, you have high blood pressure. You take five, six, seven different medications and you're gonna live, you know, an hour, two hours out from any city and you're gonna live out in the province with the girl you met uh, hopefully online and it's not near a hospital <clears throat> the closest thing are clinics and they don't have health care there so a lot of times your health needs will dictate where you should live should you live closer to a bigger city like Cebu or Luzon uh, Cavite somewhere where you could get proper health care if emergencies come up that's the other question what about emergencies well, having an emergency fund really helps. Having uh, insurance in the Philippines that actually works in the Philippines. We know that Medicare, which a lot of seniors have, does not work in the Philippines. If you're in the military, that's a different story. You can uh, maneuver with some military, even though in Manila, I believe, it's just a clinic. So I was in the military, but I never did get the GI Bill. I was National Guard for almost eight to 10 years, guys. So I had to get regular insurance in the Philippines. And I got inpatient insurance um, with a company called WR Life that pays, if there's a medical emergency, a big problem like a heart attack or a stroke, outpatient, usually you could pay out of pocket. It's not that expensive to get diagnostics and those kind of things. So we're talking about location. Um, as I said, there was a minor earthquake in this area. We live in a no flood zone in this subdivision. I was here during the rainy season, which it is even now. I was here during a lot of rain 
And a lot of areas, even in Lapu-Lapu City, the uh, Mendawi and Cebu City, uh, get flooded. Lazan gets a lot of flooding. But I noticed that this subdivision does not get flooded. It stays dry even among the, the heaviest of rains. It did get some wind damage uh, when a typhoon came through, I think in 2020, uh, while the pandemic was still going on. So choose your location wisely. Sometimes it's not always wise to pick an area, uh, uh, fellas and ladies and gentlemen, just because that's where you met the girl at and she's living in the province. Maybe you shouldn't go live in her family house, but you should maybe take your time and, and, and get an a Airbnb for a month somewhere and decide where you want to live that's better for your situation. If, you're, if your health needs, you need to be closer to a city. If you have medication needs, remember, there's a lot of out of stock in the Philippines. You make sure that they have your medications and the things that you need to live your best life now. So this is what we wanted to talk about. Those of you that are living in the Philippines, where do you live? Where do you think are some of the best places? I've heard Davao. I've heard Mindanao. I've heard a lot of people say they like to live in Cavite or places outside of uh, uh, Luzon. Uh, myself, I like Cebu. One thing I learned in the military, guys, is that if there's ever natural disasters, they're going to put the airport up first within a five mile or so radius of the airport. That infrastructure is going to be put back in place so that they can get that airplane, airport moving. Um, we live about five miles from Macton Air International Airport. And I always know that you have to have an evacuation plan if there's a natural disaster. And that's what we're talking about, emergencies, location. Where should you live? Think about your health. Do you need to be near uh, serious hospitals? Is that something that you need to make sure of? So you wouldn't want to live in the province if you needed to be near a hospital, correct guys? So pick your location wisely. Make sure that you're prepared financially for uh, natural emergencies. Um, what if the country goes to war? What if things happen? And we know things do happen. So always prepare yourself financially. Make sure you have access to your money. Keep some of your money in your house because the ATMs do go down. Sometimes even when there's nothing going on, guys. Um, and you have to have multiple ways to get your money. MoneyGram was down for a few days. I had other access ways to get my money. I had numerous ways to get my money, whether it's through uh, an ATM, whether it's through Western Union, whether it's through Remitly. Have numerous ways to get your money. Also talking about location and emergency. Remember, Wi-Fi is not good everywhere in the Philippines, depending on where you live. If you're going to vlog, if you're going to have to stay in contact with the West, you need good internet. Uh, we have that here. And so location made a big difference to Junie Lai and I, where we decided to live. Natural disasters, we wanted to be prepared for that. We wanted to be know that the airport was somewhere near. Cebu City is about an hour away. The ferry ports are there. So you can get everywhere from here. Not saying that everybody needs to live in Cebu, but choose your location wisely, especially with natural disasters and emergencies in mind. Being prepared is being ready. If you're not prepared, remember, make sure you have a stock of, of water. They bottled water here in the five gallon bottles. We make sure we have four or five or six of them at all times. Make sure that you have a stash of money. Make sure you have an emergency backup plan, how to get money, keep money on hand. So these are just some of the things we wanted to talk about. Where should you live if you're planning on becoming an expat? What about vacation? You can go on vacation, guys. I remember I went on vacation with uh, my wife. We went to Batanian Island and we got stuck there for two, three days because the typhoon blew through and we couldn't get on the ferry because no ferries were running to get back. So I had to have extra money that I took with me to make sure I could ex extend my stay for two or three days while the typhoon blew over. Of course, a lot of the hotels on Batanian Island were aware of that and they charged half price for the people that were stuck there. So this is something that we wanted to talk about here at Junior Lion Williams Adventures. Emergencies, location, where should you live? Do your research, uh, fellas, ladies and gentlemen, because everywhere is not where you should be. Remember, some places get hit many times in a year 
with typhoons. Is that somewhere that you really want to live? Build a house at. So once again, this is William at Juni Lion Williams Adventures. Just putting the word out there. Location, location, location. See you next time. And remember, as I always say here, enjoy every day because tomorrow is certainly not promised. See you next time at Juni Lion Williams Adventures. Till then, guys, enjoy your life.